What's up? I am Palak Lakhani. In this channel, I make educational videos focusing mainly on studying, working and living in Germany. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. So in today's video, we have Trishita Banerjee with us and uh, she is studying her Masters in Information and Communication Systems from uh, TUHH, which is in Hamburg. So uh, she will give us a detailed insight about this particular course. So let's get started with the video. Hi Trishita, Hi, welcome sorry. to my channel. Thank you. And uh, could you please introduce yourself to the viewers? Yeah, sure. So I am Trishita Banerjee from Kolkata. I came here in 2016 to pursue my Masters in Information and Communication Systems. My specialization was uh, communications. But before that, I had an experience in TCS for about 4.7 years and it was mostly into IT. So if you are into TUHH and you want to pursue a career which has computer science or IT, and then I would say that this course is ideal for you. Okay, great. For the other similar courses that you applied to in Germany? Yes. So as I had said that this is something which is related to computer science and IT. So most of the courses which had computer science or electronics and communication signal processing, those kind of uh, courses I had applied. Okay. For example, I would say TU Darmstadt. There was one course called Electronic uh, Electrical Engineering and Information. I don't exactly remember. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, we had TU Almil Manau, then TH Cologne, which was uh, specialized for communication networks. Okay. Then Magdeburg University, Paderborn University, then Saarland University, and also TU München. Okay. And uh, RWT Aachen. So you applied to all these universities? I did not apply to TU Munich. Okay. But yes, I applied so in most of them. That's a huge list. <laughs> and uh, uh, yes, that is a very important point I would like to highlight here. So I got uh, seven out of these ten universities, and it was a very a critical thing to decide that which yeah. university, because from India for me it's all the same. Yeah. Then I had to do some background check and uh, because of i had to manage my finances here yeah. so i thought that hamburg could be one of the uh, best cities where i could apply and pursue my studies and also do my part-time jobs which is yeah. relevant to my yeah. course okay. so that was the reason i chose to okay what are the admission requirements for your course yeah the admission requirements is actually general for most of the courses here as my other colleagues had mentioned but still it's it's good that if you have a gpa and it's because it's it's you have to have programming skills yeah. it's good that if you had a bit of experiences internship or maybe work experiences and you have knowledge of uh, programming okay. then it's good and uh, uh, it's IELTS or TOEFL is good there are some uh, specific uh, thresholds I have applied I have given TOEFL and uh, for my personal opinion, I gave GRE, okay. but GRE or GATE score, it's not mandatory. It could bolster your profile. That okay. is something which I think. Letter of recommendation, statement of purpose, that is something which can be given for admission. And if you have papers, that is also very good. Okay. How to apply for this course? Is it via UniAssist or directly to the university? No, directly, you can apply. I think uh, it is uh, like there is some portal called Tune. Uh, okay. You can directly apply their application tune. It's, it's there in the TUHH web portal, okay. and it's, the application process is very smooth here. That I can. Great. Should a student apply? Is it only in winter semester or also in summer semester? Okay. The thing is that here most most the people come during the winter semester, okay. but usually you there are some seats that you can still apply in summer semester. So the circle is like the some subjects are offered in winter semester and some subjects are offered in summer semester okay. so even if you are in second semester and even if someone is in the fourth semester they can share the same course okay. so it's quite nice yeah. and uh, usually the men uh, the mostly the people come during the winter but okay. the spring yeah. is also fine okay. Okay. Yeah. the course fees or the semester fees that you have here yeah, as we know that you it is as a state funded yeah so we do not have tuition fees but okay. do we have we do have a uh, semester fees and that is like I think it's about 330 okay. euros per semester. Okay. So that is the minimal uh, payment. And sometimes there are offers for BEFO girl scholarships yeah. and guard scholarships that you can apply. Usually the university departments give us mail, and by that time, if you they will, the top three or top five uh, from your uh, from your course can apply for those kind okay. of scholarships. 
Right. What study areas and modules does a student learn in this course? Yeah. Uh, this information and communication systems has four kind of focus area. It is usually for people who have telecommunications background, computer science, mathematics, and signal processing. So these are the main areas also when you go deep into the uh, course uh, module. So we have signal processing like uh, image processing, audio processing, and also we have microwave high frequency courses then communication uh, like uh, communication networks like traffic engineering then uh, simulation of communication networks and then we also have uh, wireless communications and digital communications okay. information theory and coding also they are uh, now because it's, it's a dynamic the, the, the university is always in, uh, incorporating new uh, technologies we have now machine learning which is quite demand in the market yeah. and data science they have one course and all of the departments, for example, the uh, communications department or image processing departments, they are gradually incorporating projects from companies like Ford and Schwarz or Bosch. They have uh, machine learning uh, modules where people can do research projects and that could help to get thesis as well. So okay. they are as far as the market, okay. I can say. Great. Do students have a uh, chance to select an elective subject? Yes. They do because uh, we have uh, like 120 credits. Out of this 10, uh, we have to take uh, 10 uh, subjects. Uh, two will be uh, two will be a compulsory for all of them. That is information theory and decoding. Okay. That all of the uh, people, irrespective of their uh, specialization, have to take. And there is, if you are taking a specialization from communications, then you have to take uh, digital communications as a mandatory okay. course. And uh, for other people, I think it's so software verification. Previously, it was software security, if not uh, wrong. Then now, I think it's software verification from the software okay. module. And electives like other things that it depends upon the uh, uh, major area you are taking. Okay. You have to take some subjects and 12 credits, like two uh, technical compulsory subjects you can take. That is from anything from okay. the whole course. Which maybe could have, you can take from embedded system, microelectronics, or maybe mechatronics, that's also something. The process module book is there in the website, like people can get a view, like what is there, and they can concentrate. Uh, how are the exams conducted in your course? Are there written exams or oral exams or any other kind of exam? Okay. Yes, I would say that, yes, most of the, like 80% of our exams are written exams. Only with communications department, like communication networks department, they have a problem PBL kind of work and then we have traffic engineering or communication networks one and two and there you it's more like a PBL problem based learning also it's like oral you have to do presentations you have to do some projects yeah. and then you have to give a viva okay and that was and I think there was assignment based okay. and apart from that most of the exams from other departments are written okay and also I would say that and this, uh, mm, they have some projects, some some credits. Like if it's like a six credit subjects, maybe four credits is for written, and two credits could be a project okay. or an assignment. Mm -hmm. But we do not have much presentation oriented uh, courses like other mostly it's written. Okay. Uh, which softwares do students need to learn before applying for this course, and, and which softwares are taught after applying for this? Course? Okay, so it's it's better that if you are doing uh, courses in this, uh, you have if you have good, oops, kind of like a C plus plus, Python or R, MATLAB. MATLAB is the tool which we usually use in most of yeah. our and Python also. Uh, this is something it's good if you are already uh, thinking that you would like to apply for this course. course. Okay. And tools, I think, NUSMB is there, then communications department, they have Omnets is there, it's, then you can learn it while doing the projects, so, yeah, something like that. But math, programming MATLAB, C++, Python is something which is very helpful, because you have to do projects and yeah. research projects and pieces mostly based on this kind of language. Okay. What research facilities and laboratories do you have? Uh, lab facilities are, like every department has a specific lab with facilities. For example, uh, the department which is communications, like Algemein uh, Nakrington Technique, which is headed by Dr. Bob, that is uh, in building N. We have labs and mostly that is computer, where we have to work mostly with MATLAB and 
and they, that's there and in building E we have uh, the computer pools which is for communication network department and there is another building which is in Scholzstrasse Harbour that is uh, the old situated premise. Uh -huh. We have image processing uh, department which is headed by Dr. Vigat okay. and there also the, the, the lab is also there and we also have uh, another department which is like hope frequency like high frequency and microwave that department is uh, near building E and N and okay. it is by, headed by Dr. Ani Yaqub okay. it's mostly related with microwave and we need really spe specific uh, lab and specific instruments for yeah. okay. Is there an, a compulsory internship uh, in your course? No, we do not have any compulsory internship okay. it's like we actually before our thesis we do have uh, uh, for ICS. We ha do have a research project. A mini project, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, and it's like 18 credits. Okay. So that actually suffices the need of internship. But yeah, it's always internship is voluntary, so it's okay. not a problem. And in this internship, like with the project, we do usually have to do one seminar on world literature review. Okay. So in any department for ICS, you have to do this 18 credit project, which is really like a mini thesis or equivalent to an internship okay. but did you find your internship or thesis yeah actually there is one very good program by the university we do have fishing for experience that is offered every semester so the career center they are very helpful they usually give us mails and that you should apply and different uh, companies do come that's also from ICS or any other background. For example, last semester that was from October, I did one internship, that's the, the voluntary internship that was with Deloitte and that was related with the uh, data mining and okay. machine learning and they are like, there are aware other companies like Airbus, likewise, so many people could do voluntary and it's more like company networking. Okay. And uh, apart from that, there is one thing called Startup Talk, with TUHH, where most of the TUHH alumni are there and they together get to form startups there you can work as interns i started one internship that was with Ballisto. Okay. that was one of the they were uh, alumni from tuh and also from T uni the, there's quite good and also there are a lot of job opportunities uh, and work students that is available in hamburg you can apply but this is something that fishing for experience and startup doc that is the in, in, initiative by the university and that's okay. very helpful for people. Okay, great. So coming to an end, uh, what would you suggest are the future scopes after completion of this course? Yeah. And uh, what can a, what salary can a student expect? Okay, so I'll say about the salary first because it's like IT, it's for the visa requirements. It's, it's I think currently they've updated uh, some regulations. It's you should be, you need to get at least 43,000 euros per annum okay. that's the minimum and the other thing is that it's like 43,000 it could go up to 60,000 depending upon the experiences okay. because it's more like a project it's project experiences or technical expertise you have you can but the minimum it should be according to the visa it should be 43,000 euros and it can go up to yeah. anywhere. future scope is like this is the IT or applied communication stuff with, which is required, uh, related with IT so we have here uh, courses like application security or network security that can let you work with the ideas of bitcoin blockchain so mm -hmm. the best digital technologies in the market is something which this uh, course offers you to get involved with you need data science with mm -hmm. machine learning with signal processing with wireless communications and also like i said network security cyber security mm -hmm. so everything which is related to it computer science digital technology you can get a preview and okay. you can get a head start for your career in this department. Great. Uh, thank you so much Trishita for thank this you. detailed uh, insight thank you. and uh, I hope you like this video guys. If you like it then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share the video with your friends uh, who you think this video can be useful for. Yeah that's it for this video. We will see you in the next video. Till then bye, take care and stay safe.